Hello, everybody, and welcome to the CLO 4.1 New Features webinar. Um, Can everyone hear us okay? If you can, yes, awesome. Thank you. Okay, cool. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, so I'm Ann, and this is Michelle, and we're 3D designers at CLO. Uh, today, we're going to walk you through some new features for our new 4.1 update. Um, and we're, we're recording our webinar right now, so if you need to step out or if you want to watch this later, you can definitely We'll send you a link and you can download it, or you can watch it online again. It'll also probably be on our forum. So. Yeah, we'll post it on the forum um, and then on YouTube and as many places as we can to make it easily accessible for our users. Cool. Okay. So we're excited to see everyone here. Um, like over 300 people registered, which is like crazy. It's our first webinar. So but, first webinar. Yeah. Okay. Um, so. Uh, as you may have noticed, in the handout section, we have some cool stuff to share with you. Um, we're going to be um, sharing my screen right now. So I'm going to turn on my clothes. Um, okay. Cool. So just give it a second. Okay, cool. Does everyone see my screen? Okay, well, I hope you do. Someone said no video. Yes. Okay, okay. Great. Awesome. Thank you. All right, cool. Um, okay. So first, if you haven't updated your four to four point one yet, you can update on our website. If you go to the help Oh, okay. Yeah, if you go to help, there's um new features and version archive, which is the in your toolbar, and then it'll load a link to our website where you can download and update your your um, your software. Can everyone hear us okay? Some people are saying cannot hear any voice. That might be, if you can't hear us, other people can, so it might be a problem on your, and someone's just saying here. Okay, all good. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, and then, yeah, so you can download the software and get 4.1. Um, when you open your new update, you're going to get this new screen. And this is just like the first thing. When you exit, it won't appear again. But um, this shows you kind of like a basic walkthrough of where everything is located in Close. So 2D window, 3D window, object browser. If you've never touched the software before, this is where you're going to look at. Oh, wait. Can people not hear? Hello? Oh, no. Hello. I can hear in the UK audio. So it looks like there are several people who can hear us. Okay, so if, if anyone can't hear us, it might be an issue on your end with a setting that we don't know. Yeah, see so if you've muted us or if you're, um, if you're plugged into your microphone or if you're plugged into headphones or not. If you, okay. if you can't hear, uh, and you're frustrated, don't worry too much because, again, this is recorded and will be posted. So wherever it's accessible online, you will definitely have sound there. Yeah. Okay. And then our our cool IT person, Close 3, in the chat will be helping you and posting updates. So, okay. Um, so I'm going to continue. Um, yeah. So now you can use this new configurator um, to kind of you never touch the software, be able to uh, find if you are good and you already know stuff, you can just hit the big X and it would probably want to appear again. But if you need it, just go to help and then show screen navigation and it will walk you through the same um, the same kind of how to guide. Okay. So uh, cool. So I'm just going to do some more UX stuff. Um, Clo is now uh, usable in 4K, so if you have a 4K screen, you can open it and you won't have to change any of your settings. It should automatically work with um, your laptop. If you are, um, 
if you are on if your 4k isn't working just definitely send us a support note and we'll be getting on that uh, new thing to notice is the toolbar because we've gotten a lot of requests about how small our toolbar is we've made the tools a bit larger um, our new kind of to tie in with our help manual our help center if you highlight uh, or if you hover over each tool there's going to be a um, kind of uh, pop-up that will send you a link to the manual or a video on our manual about how to use the tool. Um, so if you get stuck and you're kind of like, what am I looking at? You can hover over each tool and click on one of the two options to learn more about it. Uh, and then same with the tools. You can also now change your toolbar layout. I know for people with small screens or um, working on laptops, uh, you can't really see as much and you kind of have to flick through your toolbars kind of like this. So you can actually move your toolbars to the size like in uh, Adobe programs. So if you go to settings, user settings, um, you can go into uh, others and then under toolbar, you can change the layout of your toolbar. So if I wanted to be on the right or on the left, I can do all kind of cool configurations now. I'm going to change it back to the top because it's how I'm used to working. And then, yeah, uh, another thing is if you've up downloaded the new update, there will be a little icon over here that should be blue. So it's uh, download when you hover over it. That will be new assets that we have. You should be downloading them. If you download them, you'll get a washing texture and some more hardware trims. Um, we have our new like flat footed shoe and flat footed avatar. So um, that came with 4.0, but if you haven't checked it out, definitely download them. And those are free. Uh, cool. And so that's kind of new with the um, the UX stuff. I'm going to pass it over to Michelle. We'll talk about um, patterns, 3D window updates, and all that good stuff. So are you ready? Yeah, ready. OK. okay. Switch it off. Hi, everybody. OK, I'm going to go down the line of some of the features that have uh, changed and some new features. So the first thing I'm going to go over is the new garment fit map configuration. Um, once this opens up, I will explain. So previously, the fit maps were all grouped together in our fabric, but now the fit maps have been um, taken out into their own separate section down here basically so if you hover over them we have our stress map and our strain map and our um, fit map that's basically it just says can't wear if it's too tight and then we have pressure points um, so these are just now in a separate bar basically and they do have been given a different visual aesthetic now the, you can see the mesh when you switch to this view um, and Something that a lot of users don't know is that you actually have a lot of custom, custom, customization options with the fit maps. If you go into preferences, and then there's a section called garment fit properties. There's a section called garment fit properties. When you click on this, a window is going to open up that allows you to change what percentage of stretch that the colors correspond to. So this is currently set at the default. So at when the fabric is being stretched 120%, it's going to show that section in red. If I wanted this to be a larger percentage, I can go in there and edit all of those myself. So that's um, that's kind of always been there, but not a lot of people know that it's there. Um, just to explain a couple of things about the differences between the stress and the strain map, they actually sort of measure both the same thing. They're measuring the showing you based on these specific units of measurement, kilopascals um, and these two options, these are very specific that are very scientific and kind of we don't, people will use them if they know what they are. If you're not really familiar with these terms and it's not something you need to be using, the strain map is really what you want to just look at. This will just show you based on a percentage what it's stretching. If you change these and you want to go back to the default, if you hit reset, it'll 
bring this all back and then you can continue. Um, so that is kind of it for the fit maps. And are there, are there any questions here about the fit maps? Okay. But yeah, nothing too crazy. They were just separated. So now they have their own section and some different views. Oh, one other thing I can actually point out. If you go into the garment fit properties down here where you can change, you can actually change if you're seeing the mesh or just a solid color gradient when you're viewing your fit maps. So you have these options. And then you can also clearly, you can uncheck what parts are being read when it, the fabric is stretched. So if you don't care how it's stretching on the bias, you can uncheck shear and it won't really give you that reading. So, um, and then also here, if you want less, a, a smaller range of fit maps, you can basically jump between four or eight ranges. Um, Okay, so that's it for fit maps. Can you save a preset? So the couple questions we have, can you save a preset in there? I don't think so. What is it, Amy? Oh, sorry. So I guess the question is about these preferences. Once you change them, it's automatically saved in your Clo program. So every time you open up Clo, it'll be at however you set it up. Um, yeah, so it's just a default setting the way you're going to tell your program to read everything. Are there fit maps attached to the garments or the fabrics? The fit maps are attached to the fabric. It should be, it's both. It's based on your pattern, your fabric, and how it's fitting on the avatar. So it just depends on how your garment's constructed. Kind of similar to like if you're fitting like a tight fitted t shirt and you're using a woven um, and you and you like set one as, as a tight fitting knit and then one as like a Oxford, you're going to have different fit based on um, your fabric. Yeah. Whoops. High heels. All right. Okay, great. So now I'm going to move on to explain how flattening works. So I'm going to get out of here. So for flattening, I'm just going to basically show you how the tool works and the new features that were added to the way it works. You can flatten on any OBJ that you bring into the program. So I'm going to still use the default avatar. OK, so anyway, so the flattening tools are located right here in the 3D window. And the way it works is as such. So first you will use the line tool and they have added the ability to, if you hold down shift while you're on this tool, you will now be able to basically hold shift just like you can do in the 2D window and make completely horizontal or vertical movements. So here I'm holding shift throughout as I draw on him. And if I let go of shift, now I can just freely draw wherever. If you hold down the control button on your keyboard, so at the moment I'm holding control and I click to place a point, that point is a curve point. And you want to create your shape and click back to your original point. A couple limitations to the flattening pen tool or what's called line is that you cannot cross through your, your already drawn line. So if you're going to, as soon as you hit a, a segment that's already drawn, it's going to cut what you're currently drawing off there. If you try and click outside of that, it's going to give you this error message that says lines created with the line tool cannot cross. Please try again. So. Um, you might want to be mindful about how you start drawing your lines. 
But kind of that's it. The only addition to the flattening is the ability now to hold shift and mark things that way. And after you have created your shapes, I know this is looking weird, but Okay, so once I've closed all of my shapes, then you want to, now we want to extract these pieces as patterns. So you click on the flatten, you can select all of the areas that you want to create a pattern piece for. Once they're all yellow, then you can hit enter on your keyboard, give it a moment, and all of the pieces will appear in your 2D window. They appear a little all over the place, basically, because they're kind of popping up where where they are in the 3D space, but then you can just move them around. And the great thing is anything that's connected when you flatten will all be sewn together already. So I've, so you can see, I'll pull these pieces out. So you can see everywhere where there are seams where I flatten at the same time is now sewn together. I'm just gonna duplicate my side And that's it. <laughs> so any questions about this flattening tool that you're seeing? Ooh. Oh, okay. So if you change the measurements for your avatar, would that still work? Yes, if you, if you edited your avatar, um, with the avatar editor, it will 100% still work. Can you offset the avatar and flatten? Um, okay, so there's a question. Can you offset the avatar and flatten off that? Or is it better to bring in an oversized block avatar? This is relating to the question of if you're using flattening for patterns that are not supposed to be skin tight, how do we build the ease in? Um, I guess what you mentioned is by bringing an oversized avatar would work, absolutely. Um, but currently there's no like invisible offset to build in this ease after, if I wanted this to be a looser garment, I would have to go in and um, increase the width and the length as I need for my, for my fit. Can you snap to measurement body like the hips? Yeah, um, are the shapes smooth? Their shapes are generally very smooth, as you can see. Um, there are some areas where you may get some wobbliness and you'll have to go in and clean it up with your edit curve point tool. But, but we are, every with every release, the flattening is improving and it's the sharpness of the patterns that are created with it are just getting better. So it should be pretty smooth. Okay. Most of these questions are, are yes. Um, someone just asked, can you make a curve line with this tool? Uh, the answer is yes. When you're using it, the way that you would create a curved shape is when you click to place a point, you want to be holding the control button on your keyboard, and then that will give you a curved shape. Um, and the question about can you snap to measurement body like hips? Uh, with this tool, you can, you might need to have some markings, but when you hold shift now, so if I go and I hit what I know is like the fullest part of his hip, if I start here, if I hold shift and go all the way around, I won't be able to cross through that point, but. If you're looking to, to put permanent markings on your avatar, um, the avatar tape might be more what you're looking for. Yes, this is going to be recorded so everyone can view it later. <laughs> okay. 
Okay. Um, so that's it for the flattening tool. I'm going to move on to an improvement with our press tool. So the press tool is a function that has been in Clo for a very long time, but it has now been changed. Okay, so here I have an example of a coat that has a facing and full linings. So when you use the press tool now, the press tool is located in the 3D toolbar and it is right here, it's called press. The way it works is you select it and this is a function that you um, execute in the 3D window. So what you do is you click your top layer first and then once you click that top layer, it's going to disappear momentarily, don't worry. It's basically asking you to, to tell it which piece is underneath that piece that just disappeared. So here I have a facing. If I click on that facing, it, what it does is it changes the sewing line type to turned. Um, sewing line type is akin to the process of pressing a seam open or closed. So here on this lapel edge, this is a seam that would be pressed closed. And in CLO, you want to make sure that that seams like this are changed to turn because it's going to make the edge very crisp um, and sharp. So with areas like this, what the press tool now does is it automatically changes all of the sections that it needs to to turn. So here I'm telling this facing is underneath that shell. And now when I simulate, it has changed the sewing line type to turn and you see these areas start to crispen. I need a little help right now. You won't see the change until you simulate. Aha, uh -huh, but now I just gave a little tug and now my seams are nice and crisp. So that's kind of it. It's not a really major change. It works exactly the same. It just now does something a little bit extra for you throughout your projects. And so that's kind of it for the press tool. Okay, now I'm going to move on to the improvement for reading notches in CLO. So I have a file that has a pattern that came, came with notches. So the improvement is that now the sewing tools, they recognize notches and they snap to them as if they were points. So sometimes your notches come with points, but more often than not, they don't actually have a point there to indicate them. So here, if I click on the segment, you see it's continuous, but I have a marking. So now, Clo, even if there's no point, it will, I can, it's like snapping to that notch like a little magnet and it will make um, sewing any patterns that are relying on notches for assembly a lot easier and faster. You don't have to edit your pattern to turn them into points. Cool. Um, yes. And so one thing I, I'll actually go over too, because the notch, the notch function was added the last release, but we didn't have a webinar. So there wasn't really a lot of like explaining how it works. Basically, it's just like adding a point, but it's adding a notch. So you click on your notch tool. Um, I can just with your left mouse button, click once and it places a notch. And then in your property editor now here, you can control the type of notch that you have, the angle of the notch, and what side of the, um, the segment it's on. If I had seam allowance, let me add some seam allowance so we can see this. So I'm just gonna throw seam allowance around this whole thing. If I was to choose flip, it will show up on the other side of the segment. Um, I We do understand that the notches are technically on the sew line and they need to be on the cut line. Um, we're working to update this and make that better for our users. How would you insert a notch to a certain measurement from a quarter, say one centimeter? Great question. So um, just like a lot of our other tools with the notch tool, if you slide along a segment and instead of left clicking, so if I, if I left click, it just places that notch exactly where I had clicked. But if I really specifically need this, um, an exact measurement, if you right click instead, 
just like the add point split line tool, it is going to allow you to specify your exact placement. So I'm going to type in a quarter inch because that's kind of one of the closer measurements to a centimeter. There you go. And that's it. Okay, so that's it for the notches. Um, a couple of the things that I will show while we're here is the ability to add a line perpendicular to a segment. So if I do not have a point, this works a couple ways. One, if you have a point, so I'm going to just click and place a point here. If I have a point and I right click on that point, now there you, you have add perpendicular internal line. So then I can choose, um, do I want this? segment to be following the y-axis, the x-axis, or locally. So here, if I choose local, it will create a perpendicular line. And this box that pops up, it's basically asking you, it automatically makes it perpendicular to that, that area. But if for some reason you wanted to follow the opposite curve shape, you would click this. And then all of these controls, how long the line is, and so forth. So that's a cute little feature that was added. A lot of people have wanted it. So that's it for how the perpendicular line works. And um, now I'm going to actually show grading. Does anyone have any extra questions? Why are you looking at me? <laughs> so I'm going to open up my grading file and we're going to grade something. Okay. Oh my, this is not my grading file. All right, hold one moment. My grading file got saved over. I'm going to use something different. Just give us one second. Pause guess, one moment. Yeah. Uh, Let me just open this file, and I'm just terrified because it's like in my client folder. <laughs> Okay, back in one moment. All right. Copy break. <laughs> All right, thank you everybody for your patience. Okay, I'm gonna show you how the grading tool works. All right. Okay, so grading. So the way grading works is as follows. Um, these patterns are not graded. If you have a graded pattern that you import, it will read and show the grading. But now we have the addition of a grading tab. You just trash the stuff. So we're starting from scratch. So this is what you need to do in order to grade a pattern that you have. First thing that you need to do is create a size group or a size line we might know it as. So if you click this add button, a size group is going to appear in your grading tab. And then by default, we have a size one. I can click on this plus sign so I can add sizes. And then I can rename my sizes as I need. If you hit, as you're filling this out, if you hit tab, like as if you normally jump through lines, it will jump to the next line. So first thing you need to do is, is create a size group. 
the next thing that you need to do is first you want to determine what your base size is going to be. So I'm going to, this pattern that I have, I'm going to call this my small and I want to grade up to create more sizes. Okay. The tools that you're going to be using are in the 2D toolbar. They're all the way at the very far right. So if you can't see them, like currently I cannot see them. If I just move the middle bar, I'll find them at the end. While you're throughout this process, you probably want to turn on show grading so you can see your grading at it as it develops. Um, and then the step that we need to do before we can actually grade is assign, tell Clo what size these patterns are. So to do this, you actually just select all the patterns. And once you're going to use the regular transform pattern tool to select them. And then once they're selected, you want to choose um, this button right here. So I have my base set as small. So when I click assign to selected pattern, it's going to make that pattern the small. So I've now assigned that to my, my base size. And now I can start grading. Um, the function to actually grade points or whole lines is this. It's just called grading. And when you click on a point, any point now or even an entire segment, you're going to see in the property editor, we have a rule table. And you can adjust this by either offset or total distance. Most of us are used to using offset, um, but this works in a few ways. I can go in here and type in, and this works following like a Cartesian grid. So if you wanna go to the right or up, you wanna move in a positive direction. If you wanna go to the left or down, you're gonna move in negative direction. So you can type in your measurements manually or so here I'm just typing in manually the way I want this to move. You see that segment or point grade. The other thing that's actually really cool is if you select a point and instead of typing anything in here, you just use the arrow keys on your keyboard, it's going to grade in that direction for you. So here you can see I'm not typing anything in, I'm just hitting the arrow key. And down here where it says arrow key movement, you can specify how much you are moving with each arrow key movement. So if I know that I need this hem to grade one inch total, if I select this point and just hit down four times, I know that I've added an entire inch to that. Um, so you can do that by selecting entire segments or just the point itself. But if I okay, I'm going to try and this may not be the cleanest grade, but I'm going to try and grade this out quickly so we can just jump through some changes. Can you select the whole pattern at once? Um, I, yeah, so if you select over your entire pattern, you can, but because you want your points to generally grade in different directions, um, it's not probably not going to work out to like you type in it at one measurement, you know, apply this to everything. But you can. If you want to remove your grading, like here I've graded the sleeve in a way I'm not happy with. <laughs> um, if you select it with your grading tool and right click, you're going to see remove graded size. So I just removed the grading from that sleeve and I can just go ahead and click. Once you've removed the grading from that piece, you're going to have to reassign your size group to it. And then you can go back. You'll, you'll have to experiment. Sometimes you can, it works if you grade the entire segment. Sometimes you need to, to move the points one at a time. But it's different for every, kind of every garment scenario. How do we test different garment sizes on related sized avatars? Okay. Um, 
yeah, I will show you how to do that. I'm going to grade this out and then I'll bring different size avatars in. Close enough. Okay, so here I'm now on my small. If I just click, see this check mark, and there are some boxes. If I click and check the large, you're going to see the patterns adjust to the new size. And then when you simulate, um, you can you'll, you'll see the new size basically. Um, if I wanted to switch out this avatar now, if I just turn simulation off and make sure. I uh, don't have any simulation on. If then I can bring in a different avatar. So I'll bring in just a different avatar. Add that to your workspace. She's not different at all. I'm going to just bring in a guy. <laughs> I'm just going to put, hey, he's probably a large women's <laughs> dress. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm going to jump to the, no, he's wearing the small. Um, so that's how you can jump, bring your different avatars in and test out different sizes throughout. <laughs> if you wanted to, to see all of the sizes side by side, you would have to, I've done this before, you would have to jump to every size, save it as a different project file. So I would switch to my small, okay, let that simulate and save it as my small, then save out my medium, large, and extra large, and add them all into my workspace next to each other. So that's kind of the gist of how the grading goes. Um, it's going to improve with every release. So if you have any feedback, let us know, please. Um, okay. And that's, I'm not sure. Q, please. Okay. Um, Okay, and then one other thing I, I do just want to show, because I think a lot of people ask this and wonder if it's possible, but aren't really sure how to go about it. One of the questions we get a lot is, can you bring multiple avatars into the same workspace? And the question, the answer is uh, yes. It's actually probably much easier than you really thought it was. So here I have one avatar in here. If I just right click on anything, let me go to my avatar folder. I've got some different avatars. If I right click and choose add to workspace, when this, you see this box that pops up, as long as I change what's the translation position, X will move right to left. So if I just move it one, it'll come to the, you know, his left. So now I have a baby. And then if I can add another one to my workspace, I want this one to stand on the other side, then I would just do a negative. So you can absolutely bring in multiple avatars. And if I had, I know this is going to get kind of crazy. Look, I'm going to copy and paste my dress over here. Okay, I want to see this dress. This dress is just for everyone today. So I'm going to position this on her. Let's just simulate and see what happens. Ooh. But that it's, it's as easy as that. You just add to your workspace and then say, you know, I wanted to review a short version of this and a long version. You can make your edits next to each other. So it's pretty easy. Um, and then another major question is about the avatars that we have available in Clo. A lot of people ask, are we going to add more? Are we going to add different ages, of ethnicities, and everything? Um, currently, we're not don't have a big plan to make that more robust, but there are a lot of websites that their whole industry is to create various avatars um, 
for you. So we encourage you to use that route because they're kind of more the experts on avatar building. Um, okay. And that's it for me. I think that's it for me. And I'm going to pass you over back to Ann. She's going to show you actually the, the cool stuff, <laughs> the design glitter and shininess. Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm going to be doing materials and trims. Um, so new stuff, uh, definitely an improvement on um, 3.2. So yeah, I'm super excited about it. I'm going to open up one of my projects. Oh, I see that you're... Is there a question? Yeah, Veronica, I see that your female avatar has a fuller chest than the ones in the program. Um, the ability to increase only the breast tissue in the editor isn't an option. The avatar that I brought in was one from our, I think it's on Clo Marketplace. Yeah, we have a couple avatars on Clo Marketplace. Um, can I? You can, yeah, so you can use one of those possibly, or if you have a dress form that is your bust that has the correct bus size, I would use that instead because then you can have the exact measurements you need. Um, oh yeah, you can also bring in rigs and uh, a rigged avatar and use those. In the handout section, there's actually a cool handout that I made called Clo Custom Avatars Mixamo. So if you're just kind of get in, getting into animation or um, avatar reading, you can use that handout to, uh, to um, yeah, to, figure it out. Uh, okay. Yeah. So for plus size design, um, we're going, I, I also want new avatars for plus size and for lingerie and all of that. So potentially we might have some, but I think with just forms is probably better for your, your design process right now instead of, cause our, yeah, our avatars don't, the bus doesn't increase. Okay. So, um, I'm going to show materials. Uh, so there's been some improvements just with general UI. Um, the garment information is uh, improved a bit more now. Actually, I'm going to, you can't see it because I'm on my, share. I'm going to share my entire screen. Sorry. Load. So now in file, on, in, under file information garment, you should see that your garment information box, before it was kind of like um, not very informative and also was weirdly opaque, so you, could, you couldn't really see what you're typing. But now you can enter in way more detailed information. So style number, uh, name, description, all that kind of good stuff. Um, it kind of integrates with our close set and marketplace more so that you can have all that, those categories separated out when you uh, when you need them. Um, cool. Yes, you can still add arrangement bounding volumes on custom avatars. Check out my handout. It will tell you how to borrow them. Um, okay, cool. So that's new guard info. Um, reordering fabric. Um, you can now just move your fabric. Before it was kind of annoying because whatever, if you wanted your fabrics ordered in a certain kind of way, you wouldn't be able to move them around. I just switched my shirt and my pants. You can also delete the default fabric now. So before there's a file that was a fabric that was always there in the object browser, but now you can just right click and delete any. Am I like, okay, is better? Yes. Okay, I think I'm just talking too fast and too close to my microphone. Sorry for all of the audio issues, guys. We are new at this, at this webinar stuff. So we're gonna get better next time, um, for sure. <laughs> Please still love us. Okay, uh, and then, okay, so uh, for general um, prints, textures, improvements, um, print layout mode is, is, uh, is, <laughs> sorry, I'm like laughing at everyone's comments. Um, gonna be professional. 
uh, in print layout mode, now you can um, automatically align your, um, your pattern pieces. So if I right click, I can reset to default arrangement um, and then everything will line up. It'll try to figure out like which pattern pieces should go where. Um, you can also now just align pattern pieces better. So if I want to, like in the 2D window, you could always right click and align. Now I can also right click align my pattern pieces if I need them to kind of be on the same level. So that's a cool improvement. Um, you can also show your your grid. So if you have um, your print, um, like the the print repeat, it'll, you'll, it'll show you where it will start and end so you can kind of snap to it. And that's also awesome to me. Anyway, okay, I'm gonna align this and get out of print layout mode. Um, and then something just to help with some construction, some finishing this garment up, we have our new binding feature. So if uh, before it was kind of hard to make hems with that little indent, um, and also if you wanted to do like a Hong Kong bi binding or some cool like binding detail, it was harder. So now with the binding feature, you can just add it um, by clicking. So in the 3D window, there's a binding tool, you just click on a, the beginning of a seam um, on the edge of your pattern, and then you're gonna move in the direction that, actually, I don't need it there. Hit escape if you don't want it anymore. Um, and then you can click along to kind of anchor yourself, or you can just keep going. I like to anchor myself in case it's like turning red. If it's turning red, it just means that it doesn't want you to go there. You've like crossed your, um, your binding with each other. If your patterns are symmetrically linked, you will be able to, um, you'll be able to uh, do it on both sides at once. And yeah, you're gonna do this with simulation off. I'm gonna answer questions after I, I get through this bit. Um, and then you're gonna see that my binding has been added. If I click on it, I can see in my property editor, um, I can change the width, um, I can change the particle distance, it's at point 0.1, and I can change if it's under or over my garment. So I'll show you what under looks like. I'm gonna turn off my style lines real quick because it's gonna show me. So under, you can see it has that like kind of indented look um, for my seam. And then over, I'll do my, my top collar. Yeah, let's go there. And then I'm going to click on my binding and make it over. And also I'll change the fabric so you can, you can also set your binding to be whatever fabric that you have in your object browser. So I'm just gonna make a, a new fabric to kind of show the contrast. So you can kind of get that look of a binding detail. Um, yeah, that's it, okay. Cool, so CLO3 is answering questions, which is awesome. Uh, to corner angles, you can, but like in real life, I believe, uh, you can't add binding to where it's been sewn, so maybe I'll just delete a little bit of sewing on my shirt. And then I'll delete the binding down here real quick. I believe it's gonna do what, in real life, it's kind of hard to get that like edge. Hold on. Oh, actually, I have to go all the way to the seam. Okay, yeah. So it's a bit, it's a bit finicky. I can't go into the seam, um, but that is a great addition that I would probably want if I was gonna be doing lots of binding. So thank you. Um, cool. So that's binding. Um, oh, I'm gonna show our new top stitching presets. Like I said before, if you downloaded the, the new uh, features in the library, it also came with a bunch of new trims and hardware. So I'm gonna, I have some top stitching in this file already. So let's look at my bottom one. It's a dark color just so it's easier to see. Um, if you click on your top stitching, you're gonna see that the property editor menu has 
been changed a bit. It's a little confusing at first, but um, you're still able to change between OBJ texture. You just have a bit more options. Um, and if you have like, uh, if you have multiple stitches, like so your top and your bottom are, um, are there's like one, two, three or whatever, uh, or, sorry, your back and your front are different, you can change the offset of all of them at once instead of um, like doing it separately. So that might be easier for people who have a lot of, um, have a lot of like overlaid stitches. So that's just kind of the, the biggest thing. Uh, I'm gonna change this to be like one eighth or whatever. Uh, then you, you can still change the everything. Oh, yeah. If you haven't noticed, we have SPI now and text size. So you can match your specs and your tech packs if that's what you're going for. Um, you can also change the texture that's overlaying the OBJ. So I'm not sure if this is like too nitty gritty, but if you want to, you can make your OBJ have some fancy texture that's not, um, that's not the standard. But it's really tiny, so it might not be worthwhile. Uh, and yeah, so it, like I said, in the library, if you go to your hardwares and trims, there's going to be a top stitch after you've downloaded the new, um, the new features under top stitch. We have, um, our regular chain stitch, bind stitch, um, all those. And then under ISO standard, if you're a person who works with knits and, uh, and Jersey, this might be awesome. Um, there's, now more cover stitches uh, with fronts and backs, um, chain stitches, over edge stitch. Uh, you can just, all you have to do is drag it into your top stitch uh, section in your object browser. And so you can see my stitches changed. And then with that, so you can see I have three overlaid stitches and it will let me change the offset of all of them at once instead of doing it one by one. And I can, I'll just change the color so it's easier to see. And then I can change the text size, I can change the, the SVI, all that, all that stuff. Um, but yeah, so play around with those if you want. It's cool because then you don't have to waste time like making your own overlaid top stitches. And they're also all OBJs, so you get that like 3D element. Awesome. Um, okay. Um, cool. So that's that on. Yeah, so I'm gonna go into, I'm gonna add a jacket to my project, and then I'm going to show you some more trim stuff and the new fabric types, which if you haven't played around with them, they're super cool and help with rendering and showing new materials. So I'm gonna add a jacket to my, uh, my project file because it actually has more Oh, I just added another outfit to my project file. Cool. And if you haven't ever layered anything, I can do it really quick right now. You just add your garment, and then I'm going to freeze my bottom layer, set my top layer to be layer one. Now simulation. Let it go, and then I can unfreeze and unlayer, go back to layer zero. Cool. So now I have a cool bomber jacket. I'm going to add, uh, oh, I'll show you the new 3D zipper stuff. So as always, you could have added your own zipper using the 3D zipper tool. This is the one that's in front right now. Uh, mine's a little messed up because I layered it, but I'll just show you on this one. If you right click and uh, I'm going to reset the slider arrangement. Well, actually, maybe I'll just do it manually because you can. I can now click on my entire zipper and use my gizmo to move it. So if you ever are in a tricky situation and your hardware just gets kind of kind of wild, mine is like it'll, uh, a local gizmo will appear and it will let you just like move it. You can also move the um, little puller independently from the slider now. So if you're like me and you kind of want gravity to look real on everything, you can make your zippers fall instead of before when they would be sideways no matter what you did. So that's, I think, a cool improvement. Um, and yeah, so the gizmo, oh, hit escape. I just moved it by accident. 
if I turned on simulation. Anyway, it works if you're not like me. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, another thing is now in the hardware and trims in the library, um, everything has been turned into a trim file. So if you had OBJs um, before and you were trying to load them, when you load them, you kind of have to go through the process every time of loading them as a trim, which if you sometimes click incorrectly, you like load them as an avatar or they, and they have collision and all of that. Now you can save any of your 3D objects as trim files and it'll just automatically re be recognized as a trim that you can like sticker onto your garment. So for this, if I wanted like a custom zipper and I had already done all that work of digitizing it, I can bring it into my um, my file, my project here. But in the hardware entrance folder, you can use any of these as well. So I can just drag in, oh, I'm gonna drag in a slider. Drag in a slider, it'll ask you if you want it to be reset to the origin, which is like the center of the program or be loaded where it was made. And then when you open it, you can use this little glue bottle and just stick it onto your garment. Um, new thing with trims, you can also resize them directly into cl in Clo. Oh, let's be more careful. Um, with this little uh, resizing gizmo, I can scale things width, length, however. If I click in this middle space and get this diagonal arrow, I can size things up proportionally. And then when you see in your property editor, you can also kind of see the the scale and then you can enter in particular measurements if you want as well. Um, and then I'm going to add a slider. Oh no, sorry, a puller. Let's do whatever this one is. And then also just kind of stick it, stick it up here. So yeah, if you want to work on more custom uh, hardware pieces, you can start bringing them in this way instead of using our 3D zipper tool. So yeah, um, now I'm going to show you some of our new material types. Um, oh yes, I hear that siren. You can never escape it. Um, if you have any kind of fabric top stitch hardware, um, you can change the materials in Clo. Um, we have added cool new ones. I'm gonna click on my, uh, my zipper puller and you're gonna see that under material in the property editor, I have type, which is uh, our new way of rendering materials. If you click on the drop down menu, the new features for 4.1 is silk, satin, velvet, and glass, but I'm just gonna make this metal. The new ones for 4.0 were metal, plastic, and leather, and just like the whole concept of it. So let's click on metal and it'll change your object type into something metallic. You can load your own roughness map um, if you wanted to, or you can just use the intensity slider to kind of like toggle how shiny and how like super metallic or um, or kind of buffed out it looks. Roughness is just like how, um, how uh, what is it, smooth an object is. If it's smoother, it's gonna be shinier. So uh, imagine like a glass versus a brick. Map, thank you, Rudolph, that's a good word. Um, yes, okay. So if you're not very, um, like, if you're not someone who likes to render or knows that much of render, you can use our materials to kind of um, express these new hardware things. Um, okay, uh, same with fabric. I'm going to make my jacket. I'll show off our, our new new ones. Uh, my jacket I can turn into silk satin. So I just go into my jacket fabric under type, change my fabric, and I can start to kind of play with how intense it looks based on whether I have a real swatch or just based on like how um, how I want my garment to look. Uh, the other one is velvet. For velvet, um, you're going to want kind of a texture to go with your velvet. With silk satin, it's more about like how the light 
bounces off of it. For velvet, we actually have a uh, new material, a new fabric in our library. You can also just use your own texture, but you kind of need that like rough, like you can kind of see from my preview, this like uh, little spotty velvety texture. You can also use a, your own velvet and scan it and just hit that fabric thing. So I'm gonna drag this onto my pants and make little velvet pants. Oh wait, did I do the wrong one? Yes, I did. It also has a drape of like a pretty basic like cotton velvet. Um, and then when I change it, I, it's already set up velvet. I can then change the color and it works a bit better with darker colors. I'll do like a, Yeah, like a purpley. And you can play with this um, to kind of your own specifications. Um, if you don't have a map, you can just use intensity. The, um, the things to kind of know is that the there's front color and side color, um, kind of like how much of it you'll see. So if I change my side color lower, I get that like less of a kind of bleed. So usually velvets have when you look at it, it's pretty dark, and then on the edges, it gets that light color. So um, it's automatically a 10, which is kind of how much edge you see, but you can adjust it manually to make it more or less. And then the front color is how much darkness is in it. So if I change this down, it makes it, it like absorbs more color. But if I make it higher, it is uh, like more, it's lighter. That's kind of all you really need to know from front color, I can't actually see what it says, but I'm assuming it's multiplier or something. So yeah, that's how velvet works. Um, I can also make my normal map kind of higher and then you can kind of see that cool texturing. Um, yeah, so, oh, I'm gonna go into, oh, glass. Glass is a bit of a tricky one um, right now because glass is, hard to render in any kind of 3D software, but for I'll turn my buttons into glass buttons. Um, I'll do my front. Uh, so with glass, you kind of, you, you'll need, you'll look better when you're in your render um, window because you're using it to get the render. So I'm going to uh, turn into glass and then the the in, under the type, you have intensity, reflection intensity, and absorption. Reflection intensity is like how, how shiny it is, basically how much like white light you'll see. And then absorption is kind of how much of the, like how much light is actually passing through. So if I change my glass into a color, you'll be able to see better. Um, I'll show you the normal setting, which is one. Turn on my render really quick. going to wait for it to load. Cool. Let's zoom in. So cool. You see that it's got that like little glass light color. Um, if you turn the absorption higher, it means more color is going to be, uh, be seen in your glass material. So I'm going to turn off my rendering preview and change this to like 10 or Cool. If I change it into 10, it's much darker because like it's absorbing more color. So when you play with the glass settings, you kind of have to, uh, if you want it to be like super like dense, um, use like a lighter color and then turn the absorption up. For smaller materials, smaller items like buttons, I would also change the absorption up. Uh, because if you make your color too dark, it's gonna just look kind of black. But yeah, it's, like, it's a setting that you'll have to play around with. I think it's super cool. Um, so now you can just make glass buttons. I don't know, you can make wine glasses, whatever kind of thing you'd want to do. And yeah, that's that. Um, last thing is, oh, last thing with materials I want to show is uh, just a colorway mode improvement. I think this is just easier for 
people to use. I'm going to add a new colorway. Um, you see all of my different different things in here. Did I hit that? Oh, yeah, there you go. Um, now you can just change all your colors at once. Before you had to like click through each of your top stitches and change them. Now I can hit my top stitch and choose my jacket color, uh, my velvet color, and I can actually change all those colors at once. So if things are dyed to match, this is super useful. Or if you just want to make monochromatic outfits, you can do it this way. Um, yeah. And if also if you have like a bunch of top stitches and they all need to change. Oh, thank you, Daniele. No one needs key shot. No, that's mean. Um, <laughs> uh, my coworkers are laughing at me. <laughs> Um, yeah, so that's a, that's a cool thing with colorway mode. I think it's very useful if you're um, trying to just just helpful to um, cool. Uh, yeah, and then just the last thing before we're almost done, and then we're gonna head to Q and A. I'm almost on time. Um, okay, I'm like zooming in crazy, but under file, uh, the new snapshot stuff. Um, might be interesting. And also someone asked earlier about saving your prints in the same, um, like to scale. So under file snapshot, you could, this has always been a feature, but under 2D patterns, you can uh, save your patterns out and um, preserve the texture. So I can hit show images and then I can see how my textures are laid out. This may be useful to some people, um, transparent background as well. It's not the same as saving out your patterns as a DXF or exporting as a, as a PDF, but this is a good way to gauge kind of your print placement. Um, and then you can decide your scale and everything. Uh, now though, you can save these as PDFs. Before it was only PNGs. Oh, I'm typing something. Before it was only PNGs, but now you can save it as a PDF. So that might be awesome. Uh, to work in Illustrator, um, to kind of use this in another software. Uh, and then the other thing, in the when you do a 3D snapshot, which is how a lot of people end up saving their, um, I don't know why I'm typing so much. Okay, I have like things over my Before, um, when people are saving snapshots, um, if you, say you wanted to save your garment, but only your garment, and you wanted to zoom in and save it, you'd have to do this little thumbnail thing, and then you'd have to physically turn it each time. I think now, if you hit this, click to switch viewpoint, it'll automatically update your, um, your other views to kind of match how zoomed in you are. So if I move out, I can change this. Um, let me go this way. So if you have all your custom views set up, you can um, you can do this automatically instead of physically manually rotating and then updating. So that might be helpful for uh, line sheets for everything. And then I think that is it for new updates. We're gonna unless I forgot something. I think we're going to head into Q and A where uh, Michelle and I will answer questions that we may have missed or and the questions that um, people sent while they were um, signing up for the webinar. So thank you so much for listening. And uh, I'm gonna switch to my Q&A screen. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much, so much for attending our first webinar. This has been awesome. Sorry for the little, maybe not little, for the like sound problems. We're gonna figure out how to troubleshoot that for next time. Um, yeah, if you have, Michelle, do you have any questions um, that you'd like to answer? <laughs> um, <laughs> Things that. If, oh. if all of you guys go to the handout section, um, when you signed up for the webinar, there was a, like any burning questions that you were posed and a lot of people did put questions, there were, uh, far too many to be able to answer within the hour and a half that we have. And a lot of them were not, re not a lot of them, but a good amount were not related to the new features. So we created this document. It's kind of rough, but I just, um, yeah, nice. Everything's slightly misaligned. <laughs> <laughs> um, but 
like all of your questions that were answerable are here. So um, hopefully you guys can kind of find whatever. And it's not a really long document. It's like two pages and you should be able to, I didn't change any of the, the formatting of the questions really. So, um, but we can, oh, okay. So we're gonna, this is, can we watch this again? We're gonna send out a recording. Um, we're gonna also answer some stuff live. So the recording will be sent to your email that you signed up for this webinar. And uh, we're gonna probably post this on our forum and on our website. So if you follow our forum, um, I forget what the URL is, but, uh, oh, okay, it's just the support.clo3d.com. Um, it, it, we'll have a new like webinar um, section, so you can uh, watch this. And yeah, it'll be it'll be sent to you. Um, oh, the can the question document be sent to us? Yes, in the follow up email, I will I'll attach that as well. Um, and then I'm just gonna open the the burning questions. Do you have the yeah the drop? And we'll go through some of the ones that we can answer. Yeah. So that you guys don't have to like read everything. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um. So we'll just run down the list. Does Chloe have editable shortcuts? Somebody asked in these questions. Based the answer is yes. If you go to settings, user settings, shortcuts, then you can. Whoa, then you can edit them. And I don't know how that, <laughs> interesting. Um, second question was, how to easily place graphics from Illustrator? Um, you can use your Illustrator files directly, so you don't have to convert them to PNGs. And once you place them in Clove, use them as a graphic, if you make any edits to those Illustrator files and you just save your AI file and go into Clo and you can hit F5 on your keyboard, and that will show all of the the updates. And the let me, I'll just let you. Yeah, maybe we can demo some of the questions. And yeah, it'll be easier for you to for you guys to to see. Okay. Um. Okay. Pull up. I don't. I'd have to open Illustrator, but. Yeah, so you can use your live Illustrator files, and so oh, I can show this. I have a I if you have one, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was I think I forgot to show this. Um, so I mean, a lot of people love the Illustrator integration. We actually have a really cool um, new thing. Uh, I actually have an Illustrator graphic. I'll just bring it into Clo right now. Um, if you're a graphics person, I actually this is awesome. So. If I add this as a graphic, I have a bunch of um, different graphics all in one AI file. Um, they're all in different artboards, and if it's the if you're using Illustrator files for graphics, um, if your artboards are all the same, it's going to use that as kind of your, as your bounding box. So you can place as many different size graphics as you want, as long as the artboards are all the same, and then it will it will use your artboard as the scale. So um, if I use my NASA patch in this file, I can import that directly. And you saw that I could switch through all my artboards, so you don't have to save separate files anymore. Um, this will load, hopefully. And then <laughs> under, I'm just gonna go through color mode because that's the coolest way to show the, the, the scaling. But so I have my NASA patch. I can drag that same file in again for my second colorway. I'll make this my bird, and then my bird will be placed there. I know before some people were trying out graphics in colorway mode and you had like some scaling issues, but this is how you can kind of prevent that. Um, and it's just an easy way of working in colorway mode as well to be able to switch between your different graphics and see them um, with your different, yeah, with your different colors. That, yeah. Mm, yeah, I think that's fine. Okay. Um, okay. Um, one of the questions was, what format should I use to export for VRED, OBJ, or FBX? Um, you can use either file type. FBX is more for, I believe, it's for motion to to maintain motion information, but either will be renderable in VRED. Um, can the notches extend past the seam allowance? Is one of the questions. Currently, they cannot. 
but where we'll add the request into the feature request list. Um, how can you realign a print to be vertical after you've rotated it? You can, if you, let me switch out of, this is really easy, there's a few ways. I'm gonna just throw on like a print onto here. So this now has a print on it. If you rotate your print and you don't know and you want it back to the, this is gonna be a weird example. So you can rotate things a few ways. If you move this handle and you rotate that and now it's on an odd angle and you want it to be back to like its original position. If you click on your fabric, another way to control this is in the section called texture transformation and angle. So here I've rotated this to like an odd angle of 315 degrees. If I just type in zero and hit enter, it'll pop that print or texture back to its original position. Okay, we have some, a lot of questions now, which is awesome. <laughs> you guys are really cool. Ryan's doing a good job of answering a lot of these. Um, go up one that, uh, does the XFIMA include grade information? Yes, yeah, it does. Uh, does trim impact the simulation, like button holding down collar point? Yes, you can actually adjust how heavy your button is, um, and then it will reflect in the simulation. And if you are buttoning, so like my buttons are all are all buttons right now, but you can also unbutton them. So that's up to your control. You can find out more in our help center as well. So on, if you click on, the, the weight is a property built into the button. So if you click on any of these buttons, weight is here. And uh, yes, it will affect simulation. Okay, um, some of the other questions. A lot of people ask, um, when will Clo have an API? Uh, our plan is hopefully ar around the next release or after we will now have an API available and it will be in C++ language. So users can build plugins between Clo and other programs. Um, another question, are more fabrics coming? Are there more fabrics coming was a common question. Currently, there are, it's not in the roadmap to add more fabrics directly into the library that comes with Clo, but if you go to Clo Marketplace, there's a lot of different fabrics there that you can adjust or you can purchase. And if you use the default fabrics, you can adjust their, the detail to kind of get a drape that you might like. So one of the handouts was about physical properties, and that'll tell you some of the things you can change to um, make the drape change how you would like it to lay. Q and A. Ooh, oh. Oh, so many. <laughs> All right, we're in the Q and A section. Can we edit an avatar by typing directly the desired measurements? Um, currently, no, you cannot, and we don't think it'll ever be that way. But it's the avatar editor works on like these slider bars, so no, you cannot. I recently needed to do an animation where the jacket gets folded the step-by-step. -step. We might want to send him the step-by-step -step for folding. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to suggest. A... If you have a super specific question, you can um, do a private chat and just, if you go to your chat private and just send it to one of us, or sorry, Clo3, send it to Clo3. Um, we, oh, okay. No, I saw some of you did that. Okay, we're just bad at checking mm -hmm. our chat but we'll we'll be able to answer your question more in depthly and like email you and everything so yeah we have everyone yeah so if it's like super detailed animation more high level we can definitely talk um and give you that hands-on support okay uh all right a bit more about well, Never mind, sorry. a bit more about screen grab if you're working hmm, i don't know what that means right. Okay. Can a binding be placed on a stitched seam? Yes, the binding will cross through seams. Okay. Clear API from cross. Is it possible to create a cutting file to send to a plotter? No, we don't have that. Can the notches pass to the seam allowance? Um, we we do want them to move to the seam allowance eventually, so yes. Yeah. Sorry about that. 
All right. I think, well, where did it go? All right, so I'll go back to some of the questions that were submitted. Um, how to have multiple avatars on the screen. I hope I answered that question that was asked often. How to show embroidery in the stitching is just not a graphic. This is also another request where you would have to have internal lines for every single stitch of that embroidery in order to use our top stitch to like make embroidered images. So it might be a little difficult. Um, will you will you be able to adjust the cup size of the bust? Uh, currently, no, not just the bust or like the flesh of the chest is editable. Kind of when you grow the upper chest, the, like the entire avatar area grows. So you might have to get your own forms for whatever fit size you need. Can you steam instead of pressing down a fold like jacket? Okay, the steam tool is not like a steam machine that we know of. The steam function either will shrink or expand your fabric. So this is not something that you can use to flatten out or make folds look very sharp. This will basically physically, when the sh when you're in a shrinkage, when your steam brush shows blue, it will be shrinking your pattern or that just that area. When it's in the red, it's going to be expanding it. So I'll do that here. So now it's red. I'm going to like expand the back and you're going to see this kind of like bubble out. So that is, yeah, not the tool you'll want to use. <laughs> Um, okay, what else is a better way? Oh, one of the questions was, does my buyer need the same software to interact for fitting purposes? So if you are creating Clo assets and you want to share them with somebody who does not have Clo, they do not have to have the software. There are two options that you have on the Clo 3D website, we have a free viewer that you can download. Anybody can download it. And then you can send them your project file directly and they can pop that into the viewer and see everything. And they can move maneuver around the 3D space just like you can in Clo. The other service that we have is called Clo Set. If you go to Clo, CLO SEET.com, currently this service is in beta, but that is going to be an asset manager where you can share. Basically, you, you create a login, everyone can create a login, and you can share assets with people, and they can view them that way. So, no, someone doesn't necessarily have to have Clo in order to view and review files. They just won't be able to make any edits. Um, do you offer a discount for educators, school students? Yes, if you go to the pricing section of our website, we offer academic pricing and students with a um, academic Email extension will get a 50% discount. <laughs> Everyone wants editable cup sizes. Got it. <laughs> we all want it too. A lot of these things we also want. <laughs> Any VR plans? Good question. Um, the, the short answer is yes. We definitely have plans to integrate with VR AR. It's not in the immediate future, but it's definitely something we're very aware of and want to be involved with and, and will be. So you'll know when that happens. We'll, we'll definitely be talking about it. Um, okay. Go through. Someone asked, will you be replacing closed show player? Uh, no. Closed show player is still available for purchase, but we are not planning on updating it. Like the constructs, can you create a database of prints that will get used across multiple 3D objects? Um, the idea of a database of prints is kind of up to you. With the library, this is this is the database. Um, your database would be a folder somewhere on a server or on your computer with all your prints. And that, yeah, you can just use for whatever you need. So here I have a materials folder of all the stuff that I like to use. So this is my database, basically. I have um, bows I've created. I have stitches that I like in particular. I like lace, so I have lace trim separated. So that's how our database would work. But just to remind, oh, wait, you can use kind of any image as your texture. You can. 
Uh, uh, yeah, it doesn't have to be rafters. As long as if you want it to repeat, it just has to be a clean repeat. It doesn't have to be a right. You can use your Illustrator file, but it's going to use the artboard as the boundary for that image. So you have to make sure your artboard is cropped exactly to your print, and then you can use your Illustrator file. Awesome. Good. Okay. Um, yeah, a lot of these were... Someone asked, can Clo be used to create... Uh, sweater knitwear with cables. Our kind of answer is the use of Clo for full fashion knitwear is more for visual visualization, but uh, Clo is pattern based, whereas full fashion knits are yarn based. So the information from Clo is not really going to be usable with knitting machines. Mm. Okay. Um, how to upload a custom avatar, people ask. So if you enter an OBJ, anything can be an avatar. So you import an OBJ. You can then save that as an avatar, and then that will be an avatar. Can the tutorials online be treated like webinar video? <laughs> we're, we're, so we're actually, yeah, we're recording some videos right now. I'm actually working on one um, about making a button-down shirt, and that will like, walk you through how to get started. We're going to also narrate them, and we'll be posting them on the website. So... Yes, that, that's going to happen so that you guys can, like, learn on your own. Yeah, we're working on making tutorial videos that aren't, like, 10 seconds long, yeah. jumping between topics. We, we feel you. <laughs> um, uh, oh, the animation. Any animation questions might be answered in the handouts. Um, the Mixamo one also has, like, a how to save your animation after and how to use your animation. Um, so you're just saving the... The either like SBX file, the Alembic, whatever, you can export that and use it in another software. So check out the handout. If not, um, we can email us because it's almost 4.30. <laughs> okay. Can a ZPRJ file be imported into a different 3D software and then have printed patterns wrapped around them? Uh, no other program except for our sister software, Marvelous Designer, is going to read a ZPRJ file. So no. Do you have any recommendations of free apps for 3D body scanning that exports an OBJ? <laughs> and we would love something like that. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> One day. We don't really actually have anything. I don't think anything's free. There's cheap stuff, but the cheap stuff is really not high quality. <clears throat> I believe, can I design an MD and work seamlessly between... MD and Clo, you can. Uh, they read the same exact files, but MD has less functionality, like not has less modes in Clo. So there's just some things you can't do in MD that you can do in Clo. But yeah, you can work back and forth. Where did you find your baby avatar? <laughs> um, we have access to avatars. I think that probably <laughs> the general user population doesn't. Um, I I don't know where it. From, I just downloaded our avatar folder. Does, <laughs> does the flattening tool draft according to the length measurement? That's a really good one. Um, well, I'm assuming like if you know that it's exactly seven inches on the avatar when it flattens, is it exactly seven inches? I'm thinking that's what they mean. Um, question... I, I'd have to check that one about the flattening. There's a good question about, can you measure sewn garments in Clo flat to be able to give specs to the factory the same way you would when me measuring garments flat for specs? Uh, that's a really cool one, actually. Let me try and execute that. <clears throat> Technically, to make your spec, you would just measure the pattern, correct? So, um, like, that would, how you would extract the measurements from your pattern for a spec, but you... You can definitely measure it flat. Yeah. Oh, are you just checking what each measurement is? I well, that's, that's what, what they're, they're asking, asking, but they're thinking like as like a tech designer might do. Oh. So I'm going to I'm gonna try and measure to flatten these pants and measure them. Oh, wait. So before um, Michelle answers that question, it's 4.30, which is when we said our webinar was going to end, but we're going to continue because 
we have good questions. Um, yeah. But if you need to go, thank you so much for joining us. Thank as, you. As we said, uh, we're going to email everyone the webinar, and it will be available on our forum. Someone asked if there was a contact um, for more support. So it's support at clo3d.com. Um, we'll, that's how you can submit, like, more uh, in-depth questions. Or if you go on the forum, make an account, and just, like, want to post on the forum and talk to each other, um, after like a day, some, one of us will also be on the forum to answer un, any unanswered questions. So you can share whatever you'd like on the forum. And um, to get there, just go on clo3d.com. So thank you so much for joining. And if you have to go, you can go. But <laughs> you're dismissed. <laughs> but if not, stay. And Michelle will show you cool stuff. OK. Let me just change my background because this is annoying. OK. Cool. So I deleted my avatar and all the other garments. and. Bye, everyone who's leaving. Um, and so now I, it's floating. I have simulation off. So if you just grab all of your pieces and with the gizmo, turn this. So I'm basically going to turn this and move it really close to the floor. I'm on a high particle distance. You want to make sure you're on hard particle distance when you start doing this kind of stuff. And I'm going to get this as close as I can and try and get it nice and parallel. OK, and then I'm going to hit simulation and let this fall flat. So this is kind of to mimic. Beautiful. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right, so I have simulation still on. Now my shirt is lying flat on the floor. Wow, this is the, one of the coolest things we've done. <laughs> All right, so let's measure the chest. So actually, what you can, you can use pins to, if, so we know that when you're measuring stuff, uh, sometimes you, you have to spread out certain areas of the garment to kind of get it to lay flat. So I'm going to put a pin in some areas. Okay, lay that out. Put a pin up here, just make sure this is taut. Get rid of that pin. <laughs> okay. okay, so with the we have a function called garment measure. This is really cool. So the way the garment measure works is I click on one area and then I hit my other edge and yeah. So you can totally measure like you would measure a garment flat and so on with other measurements used in flats. Right. The, I guess chest is only half circumvent. You can measure both this way and with the garment on the avatar. This function just will grab the whole garment. So I can click up here and let's measure. So hopefully that gives you some ideas and you can be creative and measure your garments in the ways that you need. Can you try using complete instead of normal simulation? Is that like a yeah. challenge? Oh, like with, with the measurement? Yeah, I can probably do that oh, yeah. and make it look better. <laughs> so if you switch to simulation complete or simulation nonlinear, yeah, it actually, there you go. So I just switched. So it doesn't matter what mode you're in. Mm. Yeah, it's probably better when you're actually measuring stuff for technical design review purposes, working in simulation complete nonlinear is the mode you want to work in. Is there a way to save those measurements you've taken and export them? Currently, no. Like to generate a spec for you, um, you'd have to manually record them elsewhere. But I, I don't have any way to say like, all right, this is my chest, this is my length, my oh. sleeve opening, and so forth. You can, there's like, I guess this is like kind of a new feature. If you wanted to do in the 2D window, sorry for jumping in. I should have actually explained this while we were doing 2D snapshots. But um, if you're just like, actually, you just want to measure your avatar, your pattern piece, um, you can always show your measurements. Ooh, where is it? Click off. If you hit Shift Z, that's show all measurements. So mm -hmm. it'll, it'll show you the measurements of all of your pieces. But now you can also show all of this data in your, it's kind of crazy, but because it's a lot of stuff. But you can also just show the, these measurements in your, where is it? 
sorry, it's line length, mm -hmm. in your uh, snapshot. So that's a way you could export that information if you're just looking for like specific, like measurements that aren't um, part of your outline. And I would have you'd have to draw an internal line for each section that you want to see the measurement of. Awesome. Cool. Yeah, a lot of the stuff is the same. Uh, MD just doesn't have a good amount of stuff that Clo has. And you also cannot export your pattern from MD, so there's no way to make print your pattern after you've created it. Okay. Would there be someone in the in the question uh, Q and A asked? Will there be will will there be plugins for Keyshot like ZBrush has? We won't be created creating them, but after the next release, there'll be an API so others can create these plugins. Um. So I don't. I think I have anything else really. It's just cool. I don't see any more questions coming in at the moment, so I think we're going to wrap up our 4.1 webinar. We really appreciate everybody who came and participated. Uh, so um, we have some we have some chats with some users directly. We will write you back directly. Just give. Oh wait, we've got eight more. Thank you everyone for the thank yous. What info will be accessible <laughs> when we have the next release? When an API is available, we'll have another webinar and we'll explain everything about it. So you will not be in the dark when that happens. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Bye. We're leaving. Oh, we're Andre. not leaving. Andre, well, we're going we'll to get back to you, Andre. We're going to get back to you. Promise. And Natalie. Yes. Or Nat Natalie I'm, and Andre. I don't know if I'm, I'm writing that down. <laughs> nah. And, and Laura. Okay, all you guys. All you guys. Okay, yeah, we're going to answer you. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to go now. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye. Um, oh, let me end.